Hi there. Hello, everyone. Good, uh, good day to you. This time, uh, we're going to be discussing about sorting algorithms, a few of them. So now, when we talk about sorting uh, uh, and programming, we normally mean putting data in order or putting the items in order in, or in a well-defined order. This can be either alphabetically, numerically, either ascending or descending, or something else entirely. There's not much really a reason for you to implement your own sorting algorithm from scratch for like uh, for, for your programming, no? for your for your application. However, uh, in the course of learning algorithms, you will discover advanced fa uh, facets of a language along with uh, programming. Uh, yeah, along with programming design patterns that will give you an edge as a developer, especially if you really would like to succeed as a software developer. Okay, for today, the intended learning outcomes are the following. So we're going to be discussing about the different sorting techniques uh, among a few, bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort, and then uh, evaluate the performance of sorting uh, uh, these sorting techniques, and then next is prove the most efficient sorting technique based on time and space complexity. And the third, uh, fourth one rather, is to build an ADP out of these uh, different sorting. So basically, sorting again is a process of putting data in order, e either uh, numerically or alphabetically, or shall we say, lexico uh, lexicographically. It is often uh, necessary to arrange data or the elements in an array in numerical order from either highest to lowest or lowest to highest. Sometimes we also do uh, string no? uh, sorting of data. And uh, in that manner, it's in either in alphabetical order, either also in ascending and descending order, and it's going to be using actually the uh, ASCII values. But of course, our our programming language has actually a mechanism uh, as to sorting the data of string in our array. So this are uh, some of the applications for sorting. Uh, actually, the most common example we, especially we experience in our daily like in our daily life or daily routines, are like uh, it's it's like sorting our clothes. Uh, if you are that really uh, that uh, person who would like to sort your your clothes in your in your cabinet or in your closet, so you you're going to sort them in either uh, by color, by size, or by polo shirt or something like that. Another one is uh, an event of like e-commerce website. Either uh, you want to know you want to sort the lowest price to highest price, and then. Sometimes we also do we also do listing by popularity, by star, yeah, no, by ratings, uh, by category, and some other uh, order. So among this, we have here a uh, our dictionary. So it is arranged in alphabet uh, al in a alphabetical order. Another thing is in, uh, in our phone and in our contact. We arrange so that we're able to, you know, uh, get to see uh, that, that our data, our contact easily is actually arranged in order. And then here, no, because the Filipinos most uh, tend to, I mean, we all uh, Filipinos most mostly love uh, to sing. No, we are uh, we are actually one of the, parang we are called as uh, in the world. No, we are called. We are. Uh, called us um, uh, who really uh, are this uh, singers no we have a lot of singers here in the Philippines and so in in that particular song list we uh, it's arranged it's actually arranged in alphabetical order it could be the name of the song or it could be based on the artist I don't know but but it seems to be the, it's actually sorted. Okay, and then we also have another another application right here, uh, which is in our computer. We can sort our our file or our folder or our directories into by name. Okay, we we can actually sort them by by name, and then we 
by the date to be modified or by the size, no? But size bytes and even the kind. Okay? If it's PowerPoint or document or it's if it's a folder or a movie or an audio audio file. Okay, so why is it important? Why why sorting algorithm is actually important? Since uh, sorting can often uh, uh, reduce the complexity of problem, it is actually important algorithm in computer science. Uh, this uh, algorithms have direct application in, in searching algorithms, in database uh, database algorithms, divide and confer methods, and even data structure algorithms, and a lot more or many more. Okay. Now, uh, here we have a uh, sorting process is actually a process in which uh, an array requires uh, the changing of values. So, so that we're able to sort data, our, we need to swap or exchange values. While this seems to be a simple process, a computer must be careful to, to, to swap values that uh, it should guarantee that actually no values are lost during the exchange or ju during the swapping. Okay, so let's say we are going to have a we're, we're, we are going to to sort the prices, and then let's say we are going to swap the the prices. Say, of my pointer. Okay, let's say we are we have here price price one and price two, okay. And then let's say the price one is, let's say 85, and then price two is 100. And we want to exchange the, the values of this uh, two uh, arrays, I mean, of these two elements. So the price one takes the price two value and then vice versa. So we cannot just do something like this. Price one is equal to price two. Okay. And also something like price two is equal to price one. While it seems like we are actually swapping it, but it's actually instead of you use instead of do I mean instead of this one, uh you just actually you lost some a certain data. Particularly in the price, price two, yeah, okay, a uh, price one. So let's say for an instance, the price one here is actually uh, 85. So the price two, since the price two, sorry, so price two is actually 100, and it's going to be passed through, uh, I mean, passed to our price one. So therefore, the, the 85 now is now being replaced by the value, which is 100. So the 85 is now. Done. So therefore, uh, during the here, no, in the in this process, you are no longer able to access the value of eighty five. If you if you want the eighty five to be to be assigned to the price two, you cannot do that anymore because uh, we already have uh, the value of our price two now. I mean, yeah, the the value of our price one now is actually one hundred. So you have actually duplicate values. So meaning to say both price one and price two now has, uh, have 100 as a value. But the 85, since 85 is now gone because it's replaced by price two. So therefore this is not possible. So this should not work. This this uh, this one should not be, uh, you should not do that. No, You cannot do that to me. I mean, you should not do that to your program. So basically what we, what we need to do for this one is we're going to be needing a a third party variable, or let's shall we say a temporary holding variable. So let's say for an instance, we're gonna be assigning or declaring a variable saying like hold. So we assign the value of, let's say, if we intend to, let's say for an instance, uh, the, the value of price two. So the value of price two is actually 100, right? So therefore, hold will now have 100. So, and then this time we are now safe to to swap or uh, replace the value of price price two by by the value of like price one. So this time the value of price one is actually eighty five, and it's going to be stored into price two. And then this time, if so that you're able to have the value of price one 
to be uh, to be to hold the value of 100 so you do something like hold so therefore since the hold uh, is actually has this value 100 the price now is now 100 so technically you have here a uh, price one the price one has 100 okay your price two has now 80. So this time you are now able to exchange and swap the values without losing it. Okay, so here are some of the techniques and sorting techniques rather in, in sorting. So there are actually of, of, uh, often built in search and sorting routines in various programming like compiler. But it is actually uh, imperative that you as a programmer must know and understand at least one of the methods in, in terms of sorting an array for you to, to actually deepen your knowledge in creating efficient program. So some of uh, the few sorting algorithm uh, techniques are bubble sort, exchange sort, selection sort, and many more. And we will go through some of uh, this. Okay, so here we have bubble sort. So in bubble sort, as elements are sorted, they gradually bubble to their proper location in the array. Then it repeatedly compares adjacent elements on the array. And then the first and the second elements are actually compared and swapped if, if ever it's out of order. Then the second element and third elements are compared and swapped if ever there's out of order. So let's have a, I mean, uh, that process is going to be continued until the last two elements of the array are compared and swapped if ever it's out of order. So here we are going to have a let's say for let's say for an for an instance we have here an array at the beginning or this is this is our array here 23 10 our array elements rather 20 uh, 23 10 negative 50 70 34 and 5. So this is how it is. Uh, the bubble sort that's the process of sorting so first is uh, let's write here on this uh, on this side we have 23 10 negative 50 70 34 and 5 so the bubble sort actually keeps on comparing the element to its contiguous elements so it's uh, contiguous means yang mga katapat na mga elements example uh let's say we would like to sort them in an in ascending order so we could say something like we could ask something or write something that uh comparing 23 and 10 if it, if this 23 is greater than 10 let's say for an instance is 23 greater than 10 so since it is true therefore we will we will swap uh, 10 and 23 okay so this 23 now is going to be compared to negative 15. so this time as is 23 uh, greater than is 23 greater than negative 50 that is true therefore what will happen is that you are going to so negative 50 bubbles up so that's the term so it bubbles up so negative if this will uh, replace i mean this will be swapped to uh, the negative 50 will be will take the place of 23 and then 23 in a uh, will be also will also take uh, will i mean will now be in the position of uh, uh, negative 50 now the 50 will then uh, it's uh, will now be compared to negative uh, 70 so let's say we have 23 is greater than 70 that's false so if it's false meaning there's no swapping happens so 70 will remain to its position okay and then 70 will be compared to 34 so is 70 greater than 34 that's actually true okay therefore this will be there is swapping happens 34 and then we have here uh, 70 and 70 and 5 is compared so is 70 greater than 5 that is true therefore this will be 5 and this will be 70 so 
after that, uh, after that, after it finishes the, the comparing and the swapping of values, this is now the, the, the final value of the first loop. Okay, so we have here the final value is now 10, uh, negative 50, then 23, 34, 5, then 70. All right, so this is now our final value. Okay, so let's take this one. Let's write this one right here. So 10, negative 50, 23, 34, 5, and 70. Okay, so this time, the same process is going to be done. It's going to be made, okay? So 10 will be compared again, and this elements right here will be compared again contiguously. So 10 is 10 greater than, uh, greater than negative 50. So that is true. Therefore, negative 50 will actually be swapped with 10, okay? Then after that is 10 greater than 23. That's actually false. Therefore, 20, uh, 23 will remain to its place. And 23 will be compared to 34. It's 23 greater than 34. That is actually false. Therefore, 34 will still remain in the, uh, in its position. Now, this time, 34 is greater than 5. That is actually true. Therefore, this will be swapped. Okay, These elements right here are going to be swapped in that uh, swap at this uh, moment. So 5 and 34 will now be swapped. And 34 is, is, is it greater than 70? Yes, it's uh, false. I mean, yeah, it's false. So basically, 70 will still remain as in its proper position. So in the second, this, this is now the second loop. Okay. So here we are now going to write the Sorry, negative 50, we have 10, and we have 23, and we have 5, we have 34, and then 70, okay? Next is, yeah, so we have negative 50, we have 10, we have 23, we have 5, we have 34, and we have 70. So we, we are now going to be, this is now the updated value of our array after second loop. So here, um, you do the same process in comparing. So negative 50 will be compared to 10. That's all, actually always uh, false. Therefore, it will always remain that. Uh, I mean, it will always remain. Uh, they will always remain in their, uh, in their position or in their place. The 10 and 23 is actually false. Therefore, 23 will be. Uh, always there and now here in 23 and uh, 5 you are going to compare 23 by 2 5 so since uh, 23 is bigger than 5 therefore you'll need to swap them so this time you have your 23 it's 23 to 34 uh, is 23 greater than 34 that's actually false therefore 34 will remain there and 34 is greater than is it greater than 70 that's actually false therefore it's still uh, 70 right there. So in our third loop, okay, it's so our third loop, we have here negative 50, 10, and then 5, 23, 30, uh, 34, and then 70. Let's now move on to the next. We have negative 50, 10, 5, 23, have thir uh, 34, and then 70. So now uh, the same process is going to be made. Get to compare negative 50 and 10, that's false. Therefore, negative 50 will remain in, the, in its position as well as 10. 10 and 5 will be compared. This is actually true. Therefore, 5 will take place that if the position of 10 and 10 will have well, the position of 5. 10 and 23 actually false, so remain. 20, uh, 23 and 34 is false. It will remain there. And then and 34 and 70, it's also false. Therefore, it will remain there. So this is actually our for loop. 
So this time, since it's our four, fourth loop already, so we have negative 50, 5, 10, 23, 34, and 70. Now, in that case, we can actually observe that the bubble sort, I mean, the data in the, the elements in our array is already sorted. However, in bubble sort, it does not know that the elements is already sorted. It will only stop comparing if and only if, because uh, we have outer and inner loop for this one, if and only if the it finishes all the uh, outer variable. It's like the, val the outer variable should increment its uh, its value by by one, and then once it's uh, actually what once it's actually stops, then that that's, that's the time it's uh, it stops also. So let's say for instance, let's say that uh, we will consider this as the first loop as the as the first loop so from one, second loop two. Yeah, two, and we have three, and we have four. Now, we have here, uh, this is one, I mean one. Yeah, this is index zero, but I guess, uh, let's say we have one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five. The length of our, the length of our array is actually uh, six. Therefore, it has to, has to loop six times. So we have four, though uh, in bubble sort, it has to do the same process, although it's still, it will always become false, like 50, like 50 is going to be compared to like five, it's greater than, again, it will always remain like that. So then five will be compared to 10, it's also false. And then uh, 10 is compared to 23, it's false. And then 23 is compared to 34, it's actually false. So it remains like remains in, in their in their position. 34 is uh, greater than 70. Is it greater than 70? Yes, uh, false. So therefore, it will remain that there. No. So we have this one is the first loop, the second loop, third loop, fourth loop. This is the fifth loop, and it has to. So it has to. It has to continue until sixth loop. So this time we just copy the value, which is uh, we know at the at the third, the fourth loop, it's already sorted. But again, bubble sort is just as as the same with other programming. It is just going to follow the the algorithm that we are, we wrote. No, so I guess so. That's it for bubble sort. Okay, so again, uh, it compares each element contiguously. Okay, so that's the, now let's proceed to the implementation. Okay, I have, actually I have uh, a separate tutorial in this, in the implementation of bubble sort. And we, uh, actually I have, uh, I, I have demonstrated there from like, from scratch. So this time, this is what I said, that this is the uh, outer loop. This is the inner loop. Okay, so this is the outer, this is the inner loop. So this will base on the uh, elements of our array. So if if it depends, it will depend its loop uh, based on the, the number of elements or based on its length. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's actually, this would actually loop six times because of this now, because of this, uh, because of this, condition which is when x is zero it is compared to if it's either greater than five uh, let, sorry less than five it's true and then remember it increments by one uh, sorry it's six pala uh, yeah it's five sorry sorry it's five because it's one two three four five yeah it's six and I'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry irata so it's six so basically uh zero less than six that's true one less than increments by one, one less than six, that's true. Two less than six, that's true. Three less than six, that's true, and then so on and so forth. So pag abot niya of six less than six, it is now false. Therefore, the entire uh, the entire looping process or swapping or yeah, the entire looping process will all also be will also end. So here is how uh, the swapping happens. 
there it, here is the swap in happens. So we use the temporary variable, which is hold to hold a value before we swap them. And this is the comparison wherein, uh, let's say we we are just going to read sum, uh, which let's say for an instance we have x is zero. So when x is zero, and then when y is and then when y is zero, so that's actually basically wait for it. it's actually uh something like uh we have here num y. So basically num y, the value of num y is which is zero is actually 23, and it's compared to the value of y plus one, which is actually one, which is actually uh which is 10. It is now it is being compared to 10. So 23, is it greater than 10? That's true. And therefore, swapping will happen. Right here, uh, it swaps the value, it, uh, the this one, num plus one, uh, which is um, the value of this one is actually 10. Okay, so we have 10. And then the value of um, num y is actually uh, 23. And then the value of hold is now actually 10. So 10 will be passed to hold. 23 will be passed to uh, y, y1, which is actually replacing the value of like 10, okay? And then, so it's now safe to swap the value because you already uh, hold the value or the data of 10 temporarily. And then after that, so you can now store the value go, going back to the num y, which is num zero at the rest of this time. So in uh, now the 23 and 10 will be uh, swapped. So again, 23 to negative 50, so it will it will be swapped. So swapping uh, the swapping process will be also uh, executed, and then uh, 10 negative 50 23, and then 23 to 70 it's actually false. Then there's no swapping happens. And then the 23, uh, 70 to 34 is false. Then therefore there's no swapping happens. And then 34 is going to be compared to five. So once it is compared to five, uh, since it is false, there, I said, yeah, since it is, uh, it is actually true, it would mean that you need to swap the elements. So in terms of swapping, I mean, yeah, because it, you are going to swap, the program is going to swap that, it's going to uh, execute this process. And then that's only first loop because uh, our Y right here is it's actually going to end when, uh, when it is uh, something like Y is less than five because six minus one, which is the length of the R is, uh, five, uh, six minus one is five. So uh, when f y is five, it becomes false. So that's the time the first loop will end and then it goes back to the outer loop and it repeats the process, the same process. So that's, uh, and if to further, uh, if you want to understand further the implementation of this one, I have a separate, a separate uh, tutorial for this one, which is uh, really, something like uh, I, I demonstrated and do the code live, okay? So that's bubble sort. Now let's proceed to the exchange sort. The exchange sort is actually a cousin of uh, bubble sort. Yeah, it's actually a cousin of bubble sort, only that it is going to uh, compare, okay? It's going to compare the element to the rest of the other element. Example, 23 will be compared to 10, 50, 70, 34, and 5. If there, if there is a true or evaluation to true, after uh, when you get to compare it, you are going to swap it with the, this value. And then this value will be re will remain to will remain as 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 we go through its uh, each element in uh, in terms of comparing, it will always be this one. So after the loop, it guarantees that this value right here after the first loop it guarantees that this value right here is uh, always it's already it's it does it's actually assumed to be sorted so next is proceed with 23 and to do a process uh, we are i have here so we have here a an another the same 
value of array or elements of array. So let's just copy the elements. So we have 23, you have 10, negative 50, you have 70, 34, and 5. Okay, so this time, this is our basis. And we are going to compare each of uh, this one, each of this one to this one. I mean, we're going to compare 23 to each of these elements. Now, so let's start with 23. Is 23 greater than uh, 10? Yes, of course. So therefore, what will happen is uh, this will be 10 and this will be 23. Okay. Now, 10 will be, that's it. Now, 10 will be compared now to negative 50. So since it's true, so the 10 now will be replaced by negative negative 50. Negative 50. Okay. So this now would become uh become 10. Okay. So this is now negative 50 right here, right? Okay. And the negative 50 will be compared to 70. That's actually false. Okay. It's also compared to 34. That's actually false. And it's also going to be compared to 5. That's actually false. So there's no swapping happens. So our final value for our array in the first loop will now be, so this is our first loop, will now be, uh, what is that? Negative 50. And then you have your 23. You have here 10. And then you have here 70, 34, and 5. So in that case, we are going to write this one again right here. If negative 50, 23, 10, 70, 34, and 5. Now this time, uh, in the next loop, so since this one is already uh what they call this one it's already it's it's being assumed that it's already sorted because it's it has been if uh, compared to all of the elements and once the, there is true it all uh, it will swap its elements so it guarantees that it is going to be a the value that you i in mean, i mean it's it it really guarantees i mean a chain sort really guarantees for every loop that the first uh, element or the first position is now the sorted value. Okay, in here, we will now start with 23. Okay, so 23 will now be compared to 10. So when it is compared to 10, it's true. So our, our relational operator here is greater than, so it's 23 greater than 10, that's true. Therefore, the value of uh, this one, will be changed to 10, okay? And this this will be 23. And then after that, 10 will be compared to 70. That's actually false, okay? 10 is compared to 34. It's actually false. And then 10 to 5, it's actually true. So therefore, 5 and 10 will be swapped. So in that, uh, at this moment, in time, so... <laughs> 5 and 10 will be swapped, okay? So the value of our elements or the value of the elements of our or final elements of our loop in second loop, I, elements of our array in second loop is now, okay, this one is considered as negative 50 already, always, and this will now have 5, and this is, this is now, what was it, 23? Yeah, this is 23, yeah. And then this is going to be 70, this is 34, and this is 10. So again, this is now something like sorted, and this is like something sorted already. So we cannot, uh, we can now, we cannot, uh, we can now actually exclude that one. So let's focus on 23. Let's now focus on 23, 70, 34, and 10. This is going to be our values right now. So 23 will be our, our uh, 
we call this one? Shall we call it like our basis for it's the value, it's the key value. Yeah, it's not the key, but it's a value that we it's it's gets to be compared to uh the rest of the element. So let's say 23 is greater than 70. That's actually false. 23 to 34. That's actually false. And 23 to to 10, it's actually true. Therefore, the 23 and 10 will be swapped. Therefore, in the third loop, we have here a negative 55, 10. This is now uh, 70, 34, and uh, what is this? 23. Yeah, I just forgot. Yeah, I erased 10, but it's actually it's it's actually 23. I'm sorry for that. Uh, palitanan na ang ako ang at pentab. Anyway, so that's 23. Now, let's this is uh believed to be sorted already, and this time we'll be focusing on the 70 the value as well as 34 and 23. Now for this matter. We are going to we use seventy now for uh, for to compare the other the two elements which are thirty four and twenty three. So actually, yeah, for this one, this is true. So this is now thirty four because it's replaced. Uh, it's swapped. It's now swapped. And thirty four to twenty three, it's actually true. Therefore, this uh, should be twenty three, and this will become thirty four. So in that uh, case, in the fourth loop, fourth loop, we have here negative 55, and then uh, 10, then we have here 23, and then 70, and then 34. So this is now believed to be like, it's already sorted. And then we are going to focus on 70 and 34. Actually, we don't have to to do that anymore. I mean, shall we say we have 70 and 34, it's going to be compared, it's because it's true, what will happen then? 34 and 70 will be swapped. So to swap the value, I mean, yeah, 34 and 70, so this time, oh yeah, it, that's it. The loop will now end. So this time in the, on the fifth loop, we have negative 50, we have five, and have 10, 23, 34, and 70. Now it's already sorted. Now in this case, um, exchange sort is going to actually end already because there's nothing to be compared. So it's a little bit faster, but swapping process really uh, takes time. I mean, there's there's a lot of processes. There's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of swapping processes. Okay. But in terms of uh in terms of the execution process, uh bubble sort, it's like um, the calculation for like a bubble sort or bubble sort if, if we have six, so our outer loop is actually like six times, then our inner loop is actually. So you have minus one, so five. So if we have six, uh, sorry, if our uh, if you have six as the length of our array, it's actually six. We have thirty times, like thirty times of, uh, thirty times looping process, right? Looping process are not the execution process or not the swapping process, but it's thirty times looping process. So especially if it's uh, far sorted, it really has to loop thirty times. Now for exchange sort, the looping process for our outer loop, let's say that actually it's five, and for our inner loop, it's actually like five. So therefore the swapping process is actually, it's only 25 times, okay? So that's the difference between exchange and Bubble sort. So at least it improves a lot compared to exchange sort. So for the implementation, we have here, as I've said, we have again uh, outer loop. 
We have also here inner loop. So to say this would end when our i becomes actually five because the length of our array is six. And this one right here is always going to start with uh, i plus one. So when i is zero, that's going to have one. So meaning basically it compares 23 and 10. And then it's uh, going to stick on that value. Oh, I mean, I'll always remain in this uh, position because we use the i value right here, that one. That is why in change sort is when i is zero, it's always going to be that that uh, whatever the value of this one is going to be uh, compared to the rest of the element. But the comparing process, the process is, uh, it goes like this. So you have here 20, let's say 23 is compared to 10. So when it is true, 10 will be now swapped to so right here now I, again this is the swapping process but uh yeah to make it very real uh, very really quick 10 and 23 is now going to be swapped and then after that um the it remains the it, it will always stick to this element no matter what is the value of this one it is going to be what after the swapping it's still the value that is used to compare to another element so like for an instance, we will compare negative this one to negative 50, which is actually in that case, this one is now 10 instead of 23 because 23 is and 10 is now and 10 are now swapped. So uh 10 is now being compared to negative 50. And then if it's if it's true, therefore, still the value of that particular uh index is now going to take the value of the value of the in the element when it is true okay so therefore uh it's this one will will now update its value after the end of this loop now after the end of this inner loop and then it goes back again it goes back now to second loop which is this time of course from zero it becomes one because it increments by one but this time one plus one is two now it's now going to uh proceed to the index two, which is index two, is now going to be compared to the rest of the element. And if there's uh, if there is needed to be swapped, then swap, swap, and swap. Then after that, this will become two. Then uh, it's going to take the the sec uh the third position, which is index two, and then compared to the rest of the element, this will now increment by one. It becomes three. It's going to take no matter what value of what is the value for this one? Uh, basta it's going to compare to another or to the rest of it. So I have also a separate tutorial for this one in in, in which I actually do the code live or code demonstration. Okay, next is let's proceed to um third one, which is selection sort. In in selection sort. Uh, the selection sort is actually a, said to be a combination of searching and sorting. So, yeah, I, I'm going to read this one. During each pass, this unsorted element with the smallest or if smallest, if you want to, to sort them in ascending order, largest, if you want to, to sort them in descending order, value is actually moved to its proper position in the array. So in this sorting algorithm or technique, there's not much uh, swapping happens. So to actually, uh, to actually, I don't know what call this one, uh, so that we get to know this selection sort better and a bit, uh, better, let's have here the same with what we do in uh, exchange sort and bubble sort. So let's, let's keep copying this one. So we have 10, uh, 23. 10, negative 5, 70, 34, and 5. So there is this, what we call the um, and value, which is, let's say this is low. So uh, the low value, and the low value is going to, uh, to assume that the first element is the lowest value using the index, okay? Using the index value. So this time, this is zero, right? And this is zero. So uh, 
the it uses it, it gets the uh, index value of the first element which is 23 and then uh, when it is compared to the other element so that's why it's a combination because it's like it's an ex, uh, it's actually an exchange sort that is uh, but but instead of swapping them uh, instead of swapping the value you uh, you will get the index value instead. So this is how you do it. So 23 is going to be compared to like 10. So 23 is greater than 10, that's true. Therefore, the, you will, the low will get the index value of one, uh, 10, which is actually one. So this time it's going to be one. So the, the, the value that is going to be compared with the next, the other element will be, will be 10 now, okay? So, 10 now is going to be uh, compared to negative 5. So since when you get to compare this one, this is true. Therefore, the index value of this one, so we have to we will have to have here index value that it's 0, 1, 2. The index value of this one is 2. So it's going to replace the low to 2. Okay. And then uh, there's no swapping yet. Huh? Okay, there's no swapping yet. So we are now going to Based our comparing or comparison, tamaba. We are comparing or comparison. Yeah, sige kana na lang. To uh, by this time negative five, and it's going to be compared. Is it negative five? No, it's not. It's negative fifty, and then it's going to be compared to seventy, thirty-four, and five. So since actually this is like false, uh, fifty and thirty-four is actually false, and fifty and five is actually false. Since it's always false therefore the low now is the low value is now two okay so this time the uh, the first element and the uh the value which is uh in the index which is located at the index two which is negative 50 is now swapped so this time the 20 negative 50 Okay, and 23 is now going to be swapped. Okay, so 10 will remain right here, and then 70, 34, and 5. So the good thing about selection sort is that it guarantees that before it swaps the value, okay, it has to know and to it has it it it's it guarantees that it uh it looks for the lowest value among all but instead of swapping uh, you have right you have something like flag you know to which value to which uh, value is actually to which index you know, uh, value is actually the lowest value so that's how selection sort is is uh, a little bit uh, intelligent compared to the previous two sorting algorithms okay so this time this is now our first loop So we have here negative 50, 10, 23, 70, 34, and 5. So uh, I believe this is uh, considered now as the sorted element. Okay, so this time let's not include uh, negative 50 now because uh, similarly it's like exchange sort. And it's uh, the low val variable now will actually uh, begin with the first index already. Uh, now uh, we'll now begin with first index instead of zero because uh, zero is already like it's like as again I've said uh, in selection sort it's already like uh, it's it knows already that the first element in the first loop is already sorted because it guarantees to look for the minimum value after it, it swaps the value, okay? Or it swaps a certain values. Then, so this time we're gonna be using these values right here, negative 50, 10, 23, 17, 34, and five. So in that case, um, so again, this is done already. So let's focus on 10, 23, 17, 34, and five. So 10 and 23 is now uh, being compared. Uh, it's actually false, so remain one. 10 and 70, it's still false. 10 and 34 is actually false. 10 and 5 is actually true. Therefore, 
obtains its true the value of low, which is the index of five. And then the index of five is zero, one, two, three, four, five. So index five is the value of the low. This time you copy negative 50 because it's always the negative 50 in, in the first element. This time the five, okay, the index one, the value of index one and the value of index five will be swapped. So uh, therefore, the, the value of index 5 is actually 5, then 10 is now here in the last, in the last element. So 23, it, uh, copy lang nato siya as usual, 34. So this time you have here negative 50. Yeah, let's write second loop here. And then you have here 5, have here 23, 70, therefore, and 10. This time it's believed to be, now it's uh, assumed to be sorted already. Okay, so single. Okay, now let's, uh, since this one is already assumed to be sorted, uh, in the next loop now, the lows will, the low will now start with the something like index. Uh, we have one earlier now, so we have two. So this time, it's going to be the value of uh, index value of two, which is 23. So it is now compared to uh, 70, that's false, 34, that's false. Then that's this is actually true, 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 true. Therefore, the index of this one is actually two, and the index of this one is actually five. And this is going to be the in, uh, change into index five. So this time you are going to have negative 55 and then 10 and 23 will be swapped 70 right here and 34 right here. So again, no, uh, there's not much swapping happens uh, even though there's, uh, there's after evaluated or when during the process of, of comparing, there's, uh, there's a lot of two, okay? So this, because it guarantees to search for the, the smallest value. Okay, so next is we have here, uh, yeah, in the third loop, we already have negative 50, sorry for that, but it's negative 55, then 10, this is 70, this is 34, and this is, all right, so I guess this one is already sorted, so, this time, we are not going to be including this one in our sorting, in our com uh, comparing, okay, or comparison. So we have now the low will now become, will now reset its value to, to since two shall last time, so this time three, it's going to be the index of, which is this one, now 70. So it's compared to 34. So this is true. So instead of swapping them, the low will just change change its value, getting the index of 34. So this time the index of 34 is actually four. So next is seven, uh, yeah, 34 rather. So 30, this time is the value of 30. The value of 34 is going to be the, like the lowest value. So it is now compared to 23. So since it is true, therefore the value of, of low is now going to take the, the index of 23, which is 5. So this time, the, the third index, the value of the third index and the value of the fifth index will be swapped. So to do that, we have here negative 50, 5, 10, and then 23, and then 70, and 34 in between them. Okay, so that's it. We have here in the fourth loop, you have negative 50, you have 5, you have 10, so, so you have 23, you have 34, and 70. So this is now uh, ordered. Okay. So this time, we're not going to be including this one. So this time, the low value is going to reset its value by F3, this time by 4. So this is the, the the last element now to be compared is 34 greater than 70. That's actually false. Therefore, the 
value of low will always will remain four. So this time, there's no swapping happens. So in that case, we have six, uh, negative 55, 10, 23, and 34, and 70. So this time, in the fifth loop, you have negative 50, you have 5, you have 10, 23, you have 34, and you have 70. So we, and then in the sixth loop, it's going to be uh, like false. So there's no sixth loop, uh, sixth, sixth, sixth loop already because it's it's going to be like false so because they come like the compare uh, like and the it's like length minus one in the outer loop it's compared to the value outer less than the length minus minus five and uh, length minus one it's going to be fine. So there's no six loop already in the selection sort. So as you can see we are able to sort the data in that manner like yeah it's a combination of bubble and uh, exchange sort only that there's not much there's there's not much swapping happens uh as you go through uh, compar uh comparing each element whenever there is two okay so here's the implementation of that one so again you have some term like this one so you have some term here like lowest and then uh, it's very important for you to, to make the inner loop declared, not in the local declaration. Okay, so this is something that does the process of uh, assuming that the first, uh, yeah, out, when, when outer is zero, the lowest value is assumed to be zero. Okay, when, when after, after next uh, cycle of loop, this will now become one. After the next cycle of loop, this will become two. After the next cycle of loop, this will become three, four, and uh, five, so on and so forth. Okay, and then until six, which is actually six, less than six, which is which is actually false. Now, which process is actually getting the value in which the lowest is going to uh, get only the value of uh, value of the in uh, the index of the of that certain value after comparing. So this is the comparison. This is where the comparing process happens. This is where the lowest uh, value where it gets the 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 in the, the index value, which is it, it's ba it's going to base on the inner loop value. So basically, this is where it happens that when there is true, let's say for an instance. Um, 23 and 10, so the index of 23 is actually zero, and then the index of one is 10. So when it is compared 23 and 10, that's true. Therefore, the lowest value is from zero, it becomes actually one. This time, it is now going to, uh, it's not going to be swapped yet, but uh, based on here, so based on uh, the lowest here, so it's going to be our, the value of our lowest now is one, which is actually the value of 10, okay? Then 10 will be compared to the rest of the elements. So let's say for an instance, it compare na po niya si 10 and negative 50. That's actually true. Therefore, this will be lowest value now is going to be changed by two. And it is changed to two. Negative 50 now is actually the value of this one and it's compared to the rest of the element. So since it's actually false, there's no, the value of lowest is always going to be two for this loop. So until it, it, it reaches here, so the inner loop will now end its execution and it goes here. So this is now the swapping process. So in the swapping, of course, it's the same thing. You get the lowest value, which is, let's say, the lowest value is actually one that is uh, that has index two, is actually negative 50. Then in the outer loop, you have uh, the value of the outer loop is actually zero, which is 23. And then the value of uh, outer now, which is index zero, is now going to have the value taken from the lowest value, which is coming from hold, which is negative 50. So in that sense, there's only, uh, in, in, in selection sort, there's only one swapping happens. Okay, so that's the advantage of uh, selection. Sorry.
Okay, so I have also a separate tutorial for this one. Now, the last uh, sorting algorithm that I'm going to, to, to explain to you is the excerpt insertion sort. So the insertion sort, unlike other, other, other sorting algorithm, it actually passes through array only once. So this uh, is actually going to compare to organizing a handful playing of cards. So there are actually uh, two arrays. Okay, I mean in one array, but it's going to be split into two sub arrays. But in the implementation, it's not actually uh, in that sense. Uh, there's still one array, but the it's like the the array. And the left side it's going to be the sorted array and the array of the right side is going to be the unsorted array so it guarantees that also that all uh, arrays uh, all elements in the left side are sorted and all elements in the uh, right side is actually unsorted this is a little bit complex especially in the implementation but in terms of uh, the way we can actually in terms of uh, this one right here it's so easy only I mean, it's easy to actually do a uh, process of swapping them. I mean, like this one, so you have 70, 34, and 5. So the insertion is, will look up, I will have the key, okay? So at the first loop, it has, it is going to uh, recognize the, this one as the key. So. In the first loop, the first index is the key, and then it is compared to the first element. So let's say for an instance, is 23 greater than 10? That's actually true. So since true, you are going to swap the 10 and 3. And then that's it. That's the end. Uh, it's actually the end of the loop already. And then you don't have to have another, I mean, and you don't have it. It's actually the end of the loop because there is this uh, comparison, like end comparison. When it reaches to here, it becomes false. And then until if it's uh, like less than two other elements, it's true. Regardless of it's, it's, it's they're still true here, but it's actually false right here. Uh, it will eventually it ends the execution of the loop in the inner loop. Okay, so this is now uh, this is now uh, we have now ten and twenty three. Now at this time we have we are going to follow let's say negative fifty seventy. 34 and 5. So this time you have now the key, which is um, this one. So that your key now is negative, uh, negative 50. So this is now your key. So you compare 23 and negative 50. So this is actually true. Uh, negative 50. So again, in uh, I could not say it's actually a loop, but uh, this is how uh, this is now the final value for our first loop. Yes, yeah, so let's say this is first loop. Let's see negative 50. Outer loop, yan ha. This is 70. This is 34. This is 5. So again, it's not yet sorted. So this time, our key is negative 50 and it is compared to 23. So when it is true, so since uh, true, 23 is greater than negative 50, this is. Uh, it, this two right here is being swapped. So this time we have 23 here. And then um, negative 50 and 10 will now be compared. So 10 and negative 50. So since it's this is true, therefore this time negative 50 and 10 will be actually swapped. That's the end of the loop. So we have here second loop. So we have here negative 50, we have 10 and we have 23. 70, 34, and 5. As you can see, this one's right here, uh, right here, are actually untouched. No? So in the first loop, uh, 10 and 23 are the only thing that is being, uh, that are being uh, compared. The rest are, are untouched. Then in the second loop, uh, negative 50, 10, and 23 are actually compared, and then the rest are actually untouched. Okay, untouched na tong term na. So this time you have, you have, uh, Negative 50, you have 10, you have 23, you have 70, you have 34, and you have 5. So this time, your key is now going to be 70. This is now your key. So so this time, 
you get to compare 23 to your key, which is if this is false, 10 to 23, uh, this is actually false, okay? And then uh, negative 50 to 70, this is actually false. So nothing is going to, like it's happening. There's no more uh, actually swapping happens. So in the third loop, you have here, negative 50, 10, 23, 70, 34, and 5. So this time you have uh, that values right there. So negative 50, 10, 23, 70, 34, and 5. So this time your key will be 34. Now in that sense, uh, the 70 is going to be compared to 34. That's true. So this is 34 now. And this is going to be like uh, 70. Okay. Swap sila. Okay. So now 34 is going to be compared with 23. That's actually, the rest of it are actually false. This time or in the fourth loop. So there's only one, there's only a minimal loop here. Okay. So negative 50. And then we have 10. 23, this is 34, 70, and 5. Now for the last element, so let's have here negative 50, 10, 23, 34, 70, and 5. So your key now is going to be 5. Okay, so it is now compared to each of the elements. So 70 is greater than 5, that's actually true. Therefore, 5 and 70 will be swapped on this one. 5 and 70. Now 34 and 5 is actually true. Therefore, 34 and 5 will swap. So this is 5 and 34. 23 and uh, this is true. So this is 5. This is like uh, being swap. And then this time, um, we have here 5 and uh, 10 and 5. It's going to, it's uh, also true. So, and then this time, it's going to swap. So, uh, yeah, later na lang. So we have here true. Yeah, so negative 50 to 5, it's actually false. Therefore, in the fifth loop, of negative 50, uh, 5, 10, 23, 34, and 70. So that's already sorted. So it's, uh, there's no more loop actually because we already reached just the reaches the last element, which is we don't have a key anymore. So as you can see, in insertion sort, it's faster, especially if it's near sorted. But it's uh, a little bit uh, like um, not efficient if it's uh, far sorted, just like what we have here, you know, so five is the at the last part. There are actually bigger than than five, but uh, again, as as you can observe in insertion sort, there's not much uh, swapping and looping every uh, every comparing or every comparison. Only if there is true, okay. So the implementation of that one is actually this one. So we have here the outer loop. So uh, th this is the key now. So sorry, this is the key. Happen. So this is what happened, but I cannot write anymore. But this is now the key. I cannot write anymore. So this is now the key. This uh, gets the uh, the values. So let's say 10 and then second, next element, next element, next element. All these are the keys. And every key is compared to the element to the left side. So let's say 10. Then will be compared to 23 and then it swap swap them. And after that, next na, next key will be a negative 50. And then you compare it, uh, you compare it to the other elements on the left. So these ones are untouched pa. And then next is key is negative 70. You you compare it to the rest of the elements to the left, and then so on and so forth. And then this would make the the loop uh, na delete na siya bas delete na kay siya nakag loop it's because you have here a a uh what do you call this one compound expressions of like uh its end operator when even though this is still true but if this is already false 
it's going to end the loop, okay? And then after it ends the inner loop, it gets the value of the, the key, no? Then uh, whenever, whenever again, no? So even though this is true and this is already false, again, end operator, uh, because we use end operator for this one, it's going to be false. So it, there's not much loop, actually. There's not much uh, looping process because uh, the, uh, the basis for, for looping is when this is both true, true and true. And there is not when there is still uh when there is still values to be uh, compared and if the comparison is already for so that's it for exchange sort so i guess that would be all for this time and thank you guys for listening i hope you enjoy and you learn something today and for the rest of the other sorting algorithms it's gonna be in a separate uh tutorial because it's really I'm, re uh, I'm really tired and it medyo daghan kayo to nga looping process. It's like di kapoy akong brain, no? So that would be all for now. Again, thank you guys for listening and watching this video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.